Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about Docker. I wanted to talk to you about Jenkins. I want to talk to you about Ant, and specifically running an Ant build in Jenkins using Docker. I just put together a video earlier about how to use a Jenkins pipeline to build Apache Ant projects, and also how to just use the basic plugins in the GUI. Now, one of the problems with doing this is, of course, if you're going to be using the pipeline and calling Ant through a shell script, you've actually got to have Ant installed locally, right? So if I do Ant version, you can see that indeed I've got Ant installed locally. And it's not a big deal with Ant, but I mean, if you're going to be using a hundred different products, you know, Sonar Cube, Nexus, or it starts to become too much. So the right way to do things is to actually use a container um, and actually put all the resources that you need inside of a container and then just pull that container whenever you want to do a build. So there's a lot of official Docker container. So there's an official Docker container for OpenJDK, official Docker container for Maven. There's not one for Ant. So one of the things you have to do if you want a custom container, you got to upload your own custom container to Docker Hub. So you can actually see, I'm not sure if you're a fan of working with Docker or creating Docker images, but I put together a Docker file right here. Basically, this Docker file uses uh, Sonar Cube, it's got JDK 8 in it, it's got Git, and it's got Apache Ant 1.9.8. I take this file, I upload it to Docker Hub, and then I can use this URL that references that container in my build jobs. When my build jobs run, they'll be able to take advantage of all of these resources here. So, using Apache Ant with Docker in Jenkins, you need a container. I've created the container. You need that container uploaded to Docker Hub. I've uploaded it to Docker Hub here, and that's the latest one that I've got. And then you need to actually write a script, write a Jenkins file that will run that pipeline. And so that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to go over to Jenkins. I'm going to create a new item here, and I'm going to call it the Apache Ant Jenkins Docker build example, because that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And it's a pipeline project. And what I'll do in this pipeline project is, well, I'll write a pipeline. I've got one pre-configured here, and I'm just going to talk you through it. So on this page here, all I need to do is go down to the pipeline, take a look at the script and paste in my script. Now, the first thing you'll see is that the agent used in this pipeline, the environment used in this pipeline, is that Docker image that I just showed you. And that's up on Docker Hub at Cameron MCNZ. It's the Ant JDK 8 and Git image. And so if I want to do any Git commands, any Ant commands, or use the JDK, I can do that with that Docker image. Now, this Docker image gets downloaded locally, but it doesn't install any of those tools on my local machine that actually uses the tools inside of that Docker container. So I do a couple of things just to check out the container first. I have a little stage that says, hey, let's log all the info inside of this Docker container. So I log the Ant version, Java version, and Git version. That's just going to prove that I'm actually doing all of these commands inside of the container and not doing them on my local machine. And then I actually have a little pull from Git. So there's a project that I've got. It's a rock, paper, scissors project, RPS, and it's built using Ant. It's got a build.xml file on it. And what I want to do is I want to clean, compile, test, and package everything up as a war file. So then I just call my basic ant commands. I click apply, I click save, I click save, I click apply, and now I can just run this pipeline. It may take a moment, and as I run this pipeline, I'll take a look at my ant version, I'll take a look at my Java version, take a look at my Git version, and then I'm going to come over here and take a look at what it says when I run it in Docker. And you can see here that Git version is 211. 181 is the sub reference there on Java. Ant is 198. And you can see in my own local environment, I've got things a little different. I got 275 there. My Git version is 225. That one's 211. What was my. Uh, open JDK, there's my ant 110, and you can see over here the ant that's being used is 198. So, yeah, you can see that all of these commands have actually run inside that Docker container. They're not running on my local operating system. In theory, I guess the container is running on my operating system, but you get what I mean. 
Um, and you could be pushing that container, running that container remotely too. So it doesn't even have to be local. Now let's take a look here at the actual code that was run. You can see there's the git pull. Okay, so that ran within the container and then there's the shell script that ran that actually goes and builds my project. So you can see the different ant commands here. You can see the test, you can see the compile, you can see the package down here as well. And so you can see that all of my build tasks actually ran successfully. And there you go. That's how you actually go in and do an ant build in Jenkins with Docker. Make sure you've got your script written properly. I'm going to take a quick look at that script once again. So there's the pipeline. Make sure you've got an image to pull. That image being pulled is pulled from my account up on Docker Hub. And that particular Docker image was just part of a Docker file that's actually in that RPS ant project that puts all of the goodies in there that I need, like git, like ant, like open JDK 8. And there you go. That's how easy it is to integrate Jenkins, Ant, and Docker. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We've got lots of great articles on Jenkins, Ant, Docker, DevOps, enterprise software development, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.